to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Generally speaking, when you, are, when you want to capture men and territories, there are four things that you capture. Every antichrist system that has been built in history and is now currently at work on earth seeks to gain these four things. Psalm 24 verse 1. The earth, number one. Number two, the resources. We call it the fullness. Number three, the systems, the mind control structure. And number four, the inhabitants. Whoever takes control of the earth, the physical landmass, there is a dimension of faith that is territorial and is land. The earth, the fullness there means the resources, the economy. Number three, the mind control systems. And number four, the inhabitants. Are we together? That's just for you to understand. So we're defining terminologies because so many people say, I am a preacher of the gospel for the fivefold ministry or I am a man of God that believes in the gospel. And most people do not understand that this gospel is dimensional. So all, most people mean it to say, I am one who has been mandated by Jesus Christ to proclaim the message that saves. So the businessman will say, I have no business understanding and communicating the gospel. The politician will say, I have no business understanding and communicating the gospel. Because all they think there is to the gospel is the message that saves. Preachers are the principal communicators of the message that saves. But kingdom ambassadors and witnesses are the principal communicators of the ideology that transforms. Are you getting it now? So when we teach about the gospel, you find out that most people who are not in the fivefold ministry just shut down. They say it's not my business. When you start talking about money or talking about politics, now you are speaking my language. But the gospel is to everyone. To the preachers, the message that saves. To non-preachers, if you would want me to use that expression, the ideology that transforms. Everybody must embrace the gospel. Do we have that clear? Number two, kingdom advancement. I'm just redefining terminologies. What exactly is kingdom advancement? Every time we collect offerings, we pray and we say, Father, let this money be used for your glory. And yet that money goes into a room. We never see the money evaporate to the sky and enter heaven. And yet we say, Lord, let this be used for the advancement of your kingdom. And yet it is physical people who use the money. The money is counted what exactly does it mean to advance the kingdom if you do not understand kingdom advancement you are not even in ministry hallelujah what exactly is kingdom advance let me define it for you that kingdom advance refers to the deploying of every and any scriptural means listen carefully kingdom advance is the deploying of every and any scriptural means that leads to the revelation of Jesus and the enthroning of the same. Every and any scriptural means that will lead to the enthroning of Jesus Christ and his purposes first across the hearts of men, then across every strata of human activities. That is kingdom advance. So when you say you are advancing the kingdom to the degree to which you deploy through your life, through your skill, every and any scriptural means 
that will lead to the revelation of Jesus and will lead to the enthroning of him and his purposes across the hearts of men and across every strata of human activities. Why am I defining this? Because of the next definition. We are going to define what ministry is. And most people who say I am in ministry, believe me, they do not know what they are saying. And if this definition is wrong, your entire pursuit to be wrong. If you are on your way traveling, say to Ibadan, and then for any reason you find yourself, say, in Benin or a road, and you are speeding at 180 kilometers, the speed does not mean speed is good, but speed in the wrong direction will only accelerate your pain and your waste of time. So many people who say, I am in ministry, cannot articulate what they are saying. Are we together? Kingdom advance means deploying every and any scriptural means that will lead to the revelation of Jesus and the enthroning of the same. First in the hearts of men, then across every strata of human activities. Now let's define ministry. Are we learning this morning? What does it mean to be in ministry? What is ministry? For some you will say preaching. For our dear people, they may say singing. Other people can say whatever it is. But what exactly it is ministry? Please look up. Let me tell you what ministry is not. Ministry is not preaching. No. Ministry has nothing to do with a pulpit. Ministry has nothing to do with a church. Ministry has nothing to do with membership. Ministry has nothing to do with a mic. Ministry has nothing to do with most of the things we call ministry. Look up, please. When the pandemic caused churches to be shut for three months, there were people who were utterly frustrated. Their definition of ministry frustrated them. Because their idea of ministry is that there must be a pulpit in front of you there must be a congregation listening to what you are saying. There must be a mic amplifying your voice. And there must be a structure around. Those things are not necessarily the definition of ministry. Listen to me carefully. The essence of ministry is not doing. It's not standing in front of a people. No. What makes ministry ministry is not the activity. Listen carefully. Activity does not make ministry. Ministry, there are two conditions for anything to be called ministry. Number one, it must be motivated by your love for Jesus Christ. Number two, it must lead to the revelation and the enthroning of Jesus. That is it. Let me repeat myself. For anything to be called ministry, the necessary and sufficient conditions is that number one, it must be motivated by a passion and a desire, a love for Jesus Christ. And number two, the goal of that entire activity must be to see Jesus glorified. That means I can be a preacher, a very good preacher, and yet not be a minister. If my motivation is not my love for Jesus Christ, and if my intent and goal is to not see him lifted and glorified, I am not in ministry, even though singing. Are you seeing that by this definition, many people are not in ministry? Many people are singers or worshippers. Many people are whatever it is, but they are not ministers. So, it is not the activity that qualifies it to be called ministry. It's not the religiosity of the setting. A pulpit is not what makes it ministry. A mic is not what makes it ministry. A church building is not what makes it ministry. The motivation and the goal is what makes it ministry. Now, watch this. Who, who dropped this here? Just very quickly, where is... Who is the... Okay, now, watch this. Let me use any gentleman, come. Anyone at all. Or protocol, any one of the protocol people, come, my friend. 
I want you to carry this. Drop it here for me. Who among two of us is a minister? Who did you clap for when he came up stage? <laughs> did you clap for this man? Because he's not a minister, isn't he? Hold on. This is the one who is a minister because there was some introduction there and he came up majestically ready to preach. You see, whether I'm a minister or he's a minister cannot be tested by what we're doing. We will have to vet the motivation. If this guy... If he's bringing this water to drop for me, is motivated by his love for Jesus and is to assist me preach well to the end that lives be blessed. In the mind of God, this is exactly the same thing as a Reinhard Bonke crusade. Are you getting this now? So, question. Was Mary a minister? What was her ministry? <laughs> was Elizabeth in ministry? You mean pregnancy was her ministry? Can pregnancy be ministry? What qualifies pregnancy to be ministry? So, is a businessman a minister? What qualifies his business to be ministry? Is a politician a minister? What qualifies his politics to be ministry? This man who came and sang here, is he a minister? What qualified him? Learn this. Because when God says ministers, He does not say preachers. He means all who are motivated by their love for Jesus and will engage in scriptural activities that ultimately lead to the revelation of the Christ. Can marriage be ministry? Can education be ministry? Can looking for money be ministry? Do you know why I'm teaching you this? If we don't redefine ourselves in the next 10 years, the church will be in trouble. There are people who have no business holding a mic and standing on stage here. But because they know that they are in ministry, and since the definition given to them is the only condition for you to be a minister, is to have a church, have a pulpit, have a Bible, and be called apostle or prophet. Many business people are holding mics and struggling and suffering because... The grace for this pulpit dimension of it was not given to them. And they, they want to ease the guilt of not running away from the call of God. So they throw away every other thing that is ministry. And come here to do religiosity. And they call it ministry. Say unto Archippus, take heed to the ministry that you have received in the Lord that thou fulfill it. Is God speaking to us now? Probably some of you are about to make that mistake right now. You are about to throw away every precious thing. And you see, some of these problems come from we preachers because we have sold a template about ministry that if ever you are to be called of God, this is the roadmap to follow. If you ultimately do not end up in a pulpit being a pastor of a church, you may not be in ministry. If you are talking about the fivefold, that is fine. Is someone learning already? That means if you take away this pulpit from me, am I still in ministry? If you take away preaching from me, am I still in ministry? If you take away a congregation from me, am I still in ministry? Now you know what ministry is. Are you in ministry? When you came this morning, did you come to support the ministers? Or you came as a minister? Are we together? Mary's only assignment as revealed from the Bible 
is getting pregnant and giving birth to Jesus safely. And yet the Bible is very lavish about recognizing it. There was a woman who, regardless the way she messed up her life, she broke a jar of alabaster box of pure spikenard. And Jesus said, you better do not judge this woman by her activity. Look at the motivation. That everywhere I am talked about, this woman will be remembered. Hallelujah. So would you call Anna the prophetess a minister? Did she preach to anybody that you saw? Did she heal anybody that you saw? But she sat there sacrificing 60 years of her family life to pray down Jesus from heaven to earth. And the Bible was not careful to ignore her or to recognize her. The Bible was very lavish to say there was such a woman as this. Are we together? A minister upon the earth, he never called himself owner or father. He called himself son. It is my church. It is my members. Of course, I, I, you understand what we are trying to say, right? There are people who say that to mean in terms of responsibility. So don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But ownership mentality is what has destroyed people. A man can receive nothing except it is given to him. Are we together? Now you see, the call to faithfulness is useless when you are owner. The call to faithfulness is only needed when you are steward. Because there is someone who supervises and would vet and would check you. If I own something, no matter what I do with it, it shouldn't be your business. Is that true? For instance, I can decide to buy a bottle of water and pour it on my head. You have no right to say, what are you doing? Because in quote, I use my money, I bought my bottle of water, and I can even decide to tear it into two. And just play around with it and throw the bottle down. But if you gave me, and you said, I'm trusting you with this, there will be no misuse. Because I am aware that it is not my own. I have access to it. Look at this. When a landlord gives you when he gives you access to be a tenant in his house. The landlord, even though it is his house, he does not have a right to come and bump into that house. Is that true? However, you are forced to manage that house because you know that there are terms and agreement. And a time can come when the landlord will come to vet and say, no, 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 you've spoiled my bulb, you've spoiled the ceiling, you've spoiled all of these things. In many tenancy agreements, when something goes wrong with the physical structure, who is responsible for it? You see that. He may charge you, but he will take responsibility to bring in electricians who fix it. I can tell you, the reason why there is a lot of recklessness in ministry is because most people believe it is my ministry. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 1 and 2. I need to bring to us a stewardship mentality. This is what will bring discipline and decorum and seriousness and accountability. 1 Corinthians 4, let's hurry up please, verse 1 and 2. It says, let a man so account of us. Do I quote it? Stewards, okay, beautiful, we have it here. Verse 1, please. Let's go back to verse 1. It says, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. You know what a steward is? A caretaker. Verse 2, it says, Moreover, it is required, if it is true that you are a steward, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Say, I will be faithful. Faithful with the money God gave you. Faithful with the wisdom He gave you. Faithful with the beautiful voice like my dear friend here who came to sing. Faithful with everything God gave you. When people are reckless and arrogant and act as if they are the God of themselves, it is because they do not know that they were given this. It was the misc of Nebuchadnezzar until he was turned to an animal for seven years. And when Nebuchadnezzar repented and came back, his testimony was that he acknowledged that there was a God above that rules over the affairs of men. 
I will tell you the reason why ministry is stressing a lot of people. They have not allowed the owner to be owner. They have not allowed the owner to be owner. The earth is the Lord's. The fullness there of the walls and they that dwell therein. We are stewards. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything. Not when you went. When I sent thee. Are we understanding this now? The next thing I want to talk about very quickly. Are you learning? I want to share with us our corporate mandate as believers. If all I do is just to bring these definitions and clear up these perspectives, because most of the mistakes in ministry is because of a definition we have inherited or we have received that is pungent to kingdom come. There are two scriptures that clearly reveal the mandate of the believer. That means, regardless our individual assignments in the fivefold business corporate world, we have a universal mandate as believers. Two scriptures. Never forget this for the rest of your life. John chapter 1 from verse 6 to 7. John chapter 1 from verse 6 to 7. Please help us, media. John chapter 1. Okay. It says here, there was a man sent from God. Where did he come from? Sent from God. That means you only pass through the womb of your mother, but you were sent from God. John 1 verse 6. There was a man sent from God. Everybody say, I was sent from God. Say it with understanding. I was sent from God. I don't care the biological activities that are around how you arrived. Sent from God through the womb of a woman. Sent from God through the Yoruba territory. Sent from God through the Igbo or South South territory. Sent from God through the Northern territory. You are not a Northerner. You are not a Southerner. You are not an Easterner. You are sent from God and you pass through that territory. So, the greater part of your consciousness should be where you came from, not where you are passing through. Are we together? There was a man sent from God. When he arrived the earth, they gave him a name. They called him John. Verse 7. Why did he come? The same came for a witness. The same came for what? Is it ever written here that he came to be a prophet? So why do you call him a Baptist and a prophet? The Bible says he came for a witness. To bear witness of the light. That all men through his witness might believe. This is our corporate mandate. There was a man sent from God. When he arrived the earth, they called him Joshua Selman. And the same came for a witness, to bear witness to the light, that through his witness, in the area of the fivefold, men might believe. There is a man sent from God, who came as whatever it is. When he arrived the earth, they named him whatever name they gave him. He came as a witness to the light, that all men, through the business and finance, being the geography of his witness, that ultimately men might believe. You do not define yourself by the geography of your witness. You define yourself by this corporate mandate. Say, I am a witness. A witness has the singular assignment of validating a claim. A witness is not necessary until there is a contention over a claim. Satan is there proving that Jesus is not Lord and forcing nations to disbelieve in Jesus. And he sends you in business. He sent you in ministry. He sent you in politics. He sent you in the fivefold, what you call the pulpit ministry. Sent you as an evangelist, a prophet, a pastor, an apostle. All together, the corporate mandate is the same. We have people in this church working in the worship team, working in the media, 
working in the protocol they are more conscious about the goal of the church than the geography of their assignment is that true the protocol is motivated by the same motivation the media person is motivated by the welfare all motivated by the same motivation to ultimately see that God's purposes as committed to the man of God is effectively executed when a businessman starts thinking like a pastor and a pastor starts thinking like a businessman when a politician starts thinking like a man of God and a man of God starts thinking there is the sharing of that understanding because they are ultimately motivated by the same goal that all men through him might believe Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you he says there again Jesus is speaking that you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem Judea Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth say I am a witness the geography what you call your assignment is simply the geography of your witness if you are a man of God you are a witness using the pulpit as a platform if you are a businessman you are a witness using commerce and business and real estate and whatever it is as a platform if you are a politician you are a witness using the platform of politics and governance and the parliament as a platform are we together now if you are an academician for instance you are using the platform of academics very very important because many people you see please look up let me have your attention many people do not understand that being a witness is greater than the geography of the witness so you say i am a businessman you are right to the layman i am a preacher you are right to the layman i am a politician you are right to the layman but from a kingdom perspective you are none of these things you are a witness in politics you are a witness in governance you are a witness as a preacher are we together now you are a witness as a family man a father a mother you are a witness as whoever and whatever so your witness the consciousness of you being a validator and a defender of the claims of god is greater than the geography if you are with me say amen, amen. somebody shout i am a witness if you understand that you are not just a businessman but a witness as a businessman what you will do with that money will be different from someone who is just a businessman if you understand that you are not just a preacher you are a witness using the platform of preaching the way you will preach will be different the carelessness and the recklessness that happens around sadly around ministry business politics is because people do not understand that they are witnesses a witness is a validator that means everything you say everything you do is supposed to be proving the reality of the lordship of jesus christ is someone learning this morning hallelujah let's look at the scripture that i believe will bless you and then we'll find somewhere to tie it down for this discussion this morning the heart condition of a minister now when I say minister I mean first the fivefold ministers and then it extends to kingdom ambassadors where all ministers you understand what I'm saying now right there is a heart requirement listen very carefully God does not just use people carelessly there is a heart condition and a heart requirement that God looks for and let me tell you this if God does not find that you will never never truly be used mightily by God most people have missed out on the opportunity to be greatly used by God because of their heart condition Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26 Proverbs 23 and verse 26 very quickly please let's look at it Proverbs 23 
and verse 26. If you see it projected, can you see it there? Please read with me. Let's read together. One, two, read. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my way. Please look up. The first requirement is the correction and the surrender of your heart. Can I tell you? Everything you do that is right or wrong stems from your heart condition. You may have heard me say it in my teachings. You can fast all you want to fast. You can pray all you want to pray. You can do every kind of night vigil or spiritual exercise you want. That the only thing that gives your spiritual exercise is credence is the state of your heart. Please say the state of my heart. The state of your heart vetoes your fasting. The state of your heart vetoes your prayer. The state of your heart vetoes your word study. The state of your heart vetoes your good communication. Many people have every other thing in place but the state of their heart. The motivation behind your heart. The things that you do. Can I tell you? Allow God in the next one minute to do a surgery in your heart. There are people who got into ministry fivefold today simply because they heard that when a man preaches, they give him honorarium. And they feel instead of getting a job that I'll be collecting 40, 40,000, where will I gather enough to build a house? Let me quietly go to the vineyard. That corrupted motif. So after three years, when it looks like it's not happening, it will be easy to receive power from the devil because your motivation was never to see Jesus glorified. There are others who, their motivation for getting into ministry is because someone looked down on them and said, you will never be great. And he said, I will never be great. You will see. And they went to answer the call. Other people got, they submitted their job with NMPC, civil defense, you know, all of this place. And I'm not being sarcastic. They didn't seem to get jobs and they said, instead of wasting away, at least let me be a pastor. I know that there will be one member who believes in me enough to sow into my life. Off they go. Other people are in ministry just because they just feel like I love God too much. And what will I do with this, this amount of love I have for God? I can't waste it away. Business is too small to express that love. So let me get to ministry. Your, the state of your heart is what gives you the staying power in ministry. If the state of your heart was corrupt from beginning... No matter what activity you are involved with, believe me, you will end up being frustrated. Is God speaking to someone? In my experience, and, and many of you may have heard me say that my desire was never to be a man of God, to be a preacher. No, no. I just loved Jesus with my all and sincerely in whatever capacity he wanted me to serve, I would be grateful, more than grateful to serve. That's why it remains an honor for me today to be given the mandate that he has given me by grace. And I do not toy with it because the sheer level of gratitude to be trusted with this level of grace, it remains ever before me. Are we together? The state of your heart. You go and ask the Lord. Every time I go to God in prayer, I'm not praying, Lord, more power, more anointing, more fame, more increase. Thank God for those things. But believe me, my greatest prayer till today is, Lord, search my heart. Try my thoughts. And find out if there is any wicked way. Oh, David, you may never know that there is a murderer in you. You see, let me tell you how the heart condition works. When you see God not bless and help certain people, don't fight him. He knows what he's doing. If you saw the little David, you would never know that there was a murderer hiding in that boy. There are many wrong things in our heart that an opportunity has not yet been created for it to find expression. But it does not mean it is not there. For instance, you never know whether you like women or not. To you, you say, God, for me, no women, may God forbid it. How do they do that thing? In the name of Jesus Christ. You go and ask David. You never knew that you can fight and kill because somebody called you Joshua Selman instead of Apostle Joshua Selman. 
You didn't know that there was that lust for power and honor. And while you are starting, God says, beware, work on this. Can I tell you, whatever God tells you to work on, don't argue. Just work on it. Whether you understand it or not. You never knew that you could kill for money. You could tell lies. You never knew that you could sit down in front of a herbalist and say, I'm tired of this. It must work. By whether if God is not going to help me, what the heaven helps those who... You know, those kinds of wise sayings that come from frustrations. And now you sit down there. I know you are laughing, but I hope you are learning. When your heart condition is wrong, when Christ is not the center of your heart, no matter what God tells me today about my life, I will not argue. I will go quickly to roll before him and say, Lord, I don't want to wait until I see it. If you say it, you are right. Let God be true and every man a liar. This is a lesson for you to learn because there are many, many preachers today who do not have any allowance for God to keep vetting and probing their hearts. As at the time you said, God, I love you, you've never stayed in a five-star hotel. You've never flown private jet or first class or any kind of priority or superior service. So it was just ignorance that was saying, I love you. It was not really knowledge. There was nothing to lay down. You were already down. What are you laying down? But by the time you are in the midst of plenty, God lifting and honoring you and helping you. Can you still go back and say, God, they may be clapping for me, but here is my heart again. I'm sharing with you a very deep secret. More than just learning principles and principles and principles, if your heart condition is wrong, you will do every principle right. You will be shocked it will still not work. Your heart condition. I am ever aware of this. When God begins to lift me or opens any door very quickly, I go to Him. Lord, your boy is here again. With all the human tendencies, people clapping, calling you King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Don't say it who enter you. Go and ask William Branham. Go and ask people who have gone ahead of you. You rush to God and say, Before I destroy myself out of foolishness, vet me. And God says, you are doing well, but lost. Be careful. It's already beginning to grow. You don't say, God, God forbid. You are rebuking God forbid. No. Pride. In the last two weeks, it's like pride is already growing. Deal with it. That spirit of competition is already at work in you. The moment he comes to you like that, rejoice. Rejoice. Can I tell you? You may have heard it in my teachings. You know a man who is a man of the secret place because you will never see any deficiency for a long time. You will see this for two months. Pride is growing. One day you will just see that it has gone. You will know that the secret place, the place where men are changed. When you see people continue to grow in certain levels of error for a long time, it is because their pride has covered that aspect of them. They don't give God allowance to prune it and work on it. John 15, the person I love is the one that I prune so that he will bear much fruit. You may not like what I'm teaching you this morning, but if it's fruitfulness you want in ministry, forget that pride of perfectionism. Go back to God in sincerity. Till tomorrow, till forever, I will never go to God with any sense of perfectionism. No. We live in a world where we are obsessed to look flawless before men. You better go before God and roll on the ground and say, God, please search my heart. It's not self-condemnation. Let people keep calling you whatever. They will clap for you the day you crash. They will bury you and move forward. So if the heart of men, men are wicked, they can clap for you and call you all kinds of things. Let ministry go down. You will see the same people who call you king of kings who say crucify him. When Benny Hinn was younger in ministry, am I wasting your time? When Benny Hinn was younger in ministry, Marilyn Hickney told him something. She said, Benny, if you can find five people who love you sincerely and believe in you, 
you are about the luckiest man on earth he laughed and he told her that it was kings that receive him when he goes he goes for crusades of course i'm saying this now with all honor to him and because he has shared it himself when he had a challenge you know in ministry marriage and all of that in 24 hours half of his partners left sir half the people who are saying we will stand with you and preach the gospel with you nobody cared to verify anything everybody just went to your tent to israel and he stood there broken with bills in debt it is painful when those who say hosanna also say crucify him so before you allow the flattery of men to destroy you let me teach you that there is a friend that stick it closer than a brother run away from that celebrity deception and stay with the one who will stay with you no matter what happens this is a message our generation of ministers need i receive over 800 text messages every day and i thank god and i honor the lord for all of these people i sleep and i wake up to all kinds of commendations but i can tell you i know that there is one and one alone who can accommodate all the versions of me where would i be if you left me where would i be if you let me. someone learning your heart condition that's why God can take another man's prayer request and give to one as a gift because he has found your heart condition so right I pray for myself even as I'm standing here with you may I never get too big that God cannot search my heart and tell me his verdict you see, the person who loves you is the one who will open up to you like this. Because most times when we come as preachers, we just patch everything and just know. The secret is not just in expertise. There are times where your boat is right. There are times when you are at the sea where you should catch fish. There are times where you have the net, but you will still not catch fish. It is not an error in your system. There is just no fish. At that point, it will take a relationship with the one who can give fish. There are times if your net is torn, you won't catch fish. But there are times all the principles are correct. If there is one secret I want to teach you today about ministry, there are a few other principles that are powerful, but the greatest of them that I've seen in my life. And believe me, with all humility, I know what I'm saying. People call me every time and say, Apostle, you are this, you are that. How come this result? And I say, oh dear, you do not know that this man who stands before you is the puppet you are seeing. There is one who is behind him. There are certain things that cannot be done by men. Is God speaking to someone? You need to allow God to vet that pride. Vet that whatever it is. Especially our generation of preachers, let's be careful. We live in a world that is obsessed with being celebrities. Yes, enjoy the honor and whatever blessing that comes with ministry, but please learn this about men. Men are very self-centered. If they clap for you, they are only clapping for themselves through you. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? For great is the measure of your royalty. O oh, morning star, you truly are. When I learned this in life, I thank God for all that represents honor that he has given to me. But I have trained myself every day. Sometimes I stand before a mirror and looking at myself, I say, Joshua Selman, you were once a baby in the hand of a woman. Do not let the nation celebrate you out of your secret place. They were not there when God started. They only met you at the corridors of greatness. And they don't have enough patience to stay with you. 
stay with the one who started with you when you did not look like it preachers some of you here are frustrating yourself and killing yourself over land and building issue leave that and go back to the secret place go back and say lord i may not have members i may not have great followership across the globe but one thing i have is you and you are that treasure are you learning lord what is it about one billion that you cannot give me and he says you are right your heart condition i love you too much to give you one billion what do you mean you love me too much when i gave you 10 million i didn't see you again you disappeared and ran away morning devotion i'm flying business class i have to hurry up and he says just because of 10 million naira no I love you too much to keep you in that state you know when people claim things in church now i'm a man of faith don't get me wrong but when people claim things you know sometimes i just watch with wonder and i say what do you think god is a robot hmm. when you read in the bible that his last treasurer betrayed him don't just say god give me money find out what the treasurer did not do because god is still looking for treasurers his last one disappointed him and if you come and say lord i want to be your treasurer make sure you are not judas again can i tell you go and learn all the greek and the hebrew you can learn if your heart condition is wrong you will be surprised how you will know so much and yet doors of ministry will not open go and try to know all the connections of men go and learn the principles go and receive different anointing oils from men of god and pour it at once on your head because of how determined you are to carry the anointing and you will be shocked you will only look like a herbalist nothing absolutely nothing will stay there because your heart condition please do not forget this jeremiah 17 from verse 9 and 10 the heart of man is desperately wicked who can know it any man including joshua selman the heart of man is desperately deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it verse 10 please read together if you're a christian and you can see it are you ready one to read i the lord search the heart I try the reins even to give every man according to what? Not according to his begging. Not according to his desire. According to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Let me tell you sincerely, believers, I have had the honor and the privilege of talking with the fathers of faith in this nation and across a few other nations i've had the honor of learning wisdom from several people i can tell you behind the giant genuine exploits that you see is a heart that is broken humble malleable before the god of heaven when people say great people are proud i say compared to what someone can bring me a cup of water now and based on someone's mindset this is pride why didn't i go and carry it myself so when people say people are proud i say based on what standard you have to look at where the person is standing first you can meet someone washing my clothes now and say it's pride what is it about washing that <laughs> ah, believers please go for a retreat use this conference and go it's an advice go for a retreat in that retreat don't put your hand in your pocket lie on the ground flat carry your certificate carry your bible carry your ministry csc document and say lord i hand everything over to you if you do not help me i don't know what tendencies are in my heart carry your business your company whatever it is your accolades and cry before god and he will come to you 
and say because you have shown me that your heart is right let's go and i'm telling you it will look like you held a charm in one month god can open doors for you in a way that will surprise you i know what i am saying has someone learned anything so whilst you are seated before i just wrap up and touch on the remaining and then we'll pray wherever you are you're going to lay your hand as, on your chest as a point of contact and cry before the god of heaven lord i am not ashamed check my heart you want to kneel down you want to stand please it's, it's a moment of genuine repentance and soul searching cry before the lord i lay it all down again To hear you say that I'm your friend Help me find a way Bring me back to you tendencies oh God the arm of the Lord is not too short to open up doors or to lift you in business in politics in ministry it is a state of your heart that circumcision someone is praying nothing to be ashamed of Someone is praying. Let it be from the depth of your heart. This I know about God. Take my heart and mold. Take my mind. Transform.
You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. Yes, your part. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. Anoint my everything. Change my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything. Say, take all of me. All of me, Lord. Take all of me. You're not wasting your time. I'm giving you a piece of my secret place. It is not what you do once in a while. It's how you live. Search my heart, oh God, and try my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me. Lead me to the way everlasting. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Please bring out three people for me right now. I just saw fire. Just moving. And because of this prayer of brokenness, there is an anointing, particularly one of them. That, that grace is an evangelistic dimension, but it does not look like it yet because you are still in the place of prayer. Three of them. I'm stretching my hands now. The power of God will come on them. One of them will even start running. Please hold them and bring them out here as I share with you the other principles. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. I truly cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. You're the King of kings and lords. Of lords, you are the King. Of kings, you are the Lord. Of lords, your glorious majesty. the number seven and I'm seeing a mantle for restoration is coming on seven people bring bring them out too. seven for one of them several things have gone wrong in your life and family you are not directly in ministry but I'm seeing this anointing in the name of Jesus wherever you are I speak by the Spirit of God please help our mother in the name of Jesus Christ Help that woman, please. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Restoration. May that mantle come upon you. 
Malite Senekete Barakosia. You are my eyes place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong in the strength. Hallelujah. Who is that Biodu? I'm hearing the name Abiodu. Is there someone carrying that name? Abiodu. Abiodun. The Abiodun I'm seeing is wearing a black suit. Is there someone like that? Abiodun, you are wearing a suit. What's your name, sir? Just verify first. What's your name, sir? Abiodun. You, you are a member here? No, sir. You came for this meeting. You yes, believe sir. in Jesus? Yes, what do you do? I'm just working on my own. I'm going to pray for you. You believe that God can lift you? The Lord is bringing restoration to your life. I stretch my hands over you and in the name of Jesus, I command this wicked spirit that has tied you down and tied your destiny down to give way now. Forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. My friend, look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. I just saw an anointing. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will never be the same again. Madam, the Lord is saying, I should tell you, I don't know who this woman is, but in the name of Jesus, the Lord is saying he is restoring. The month of April is your month. God is bringing strange restoration, even by the Spirit of God. Is there someone called Caleb? I'm hearing a name, Caleb. 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 There is a woman here. The name of your son is Caleb. Who is that? Caleb. Huh? I came because of Caleb. Can, can you help us with the mic? Oh, you came here because of Caleb. Is it technical help? Huh? Hmm. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise for you are highly set up for some time. You are highly set up. Mama, please stand up. Are you a member of this church? You can, what's wrong with Caleb? Caleb, used to be very, very devoted to God. What's wrong with Caleb? Caleb used to be very, very devoted to God. I sent him to Canada. I don't understand what's happening to his faith. As I speak to you, he has blocked my line. You see, my dear people, hear me. There is no limit. One communication of the prophetic with balance is about to save this woman and save her child right now. Now, but hear me. This is the warning. Because many of us, when God begins to use us like this, back to my prior discussion. I am a man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. It is that pride and, and lack of brokenness that stops God from advancing with His grace and gift upon our lives. There is nothing extraordinarily I'm doing here. You see, look at this woman. How can I stand here and come and sit and know that a woman is suffering with a... Now imagine this woman came for a minister's conference and she believed that she came for her son. How in the world can I know that her son is in Canada? I've never met you. I don't even know who this woman is. Man of God, this is how far God can take you when you become broken enough. This has nothing to do with being an apostle or prophet or whatever. No. It is how far God is willing to solve the problems of people. 
Now, let me ask you a question. Is Jesus glorified in this process? Because if this same woman comes with that her son, Caleb, and holds him, that boy is in Canada. Mama is here. But you can see her crying because of the pain. This is what should happen in church. That people should come and know that they met Jesus. Jesus glorified. More than a man of God being glorified. Question, how do you have empty pews under this condition? Mama, in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God, you will never forget this conference for what God will do. I release that grace upon you. Out the spirit that is at work in Caleb that would not allow him to serve God. By the rod of a higher priesthood, I decree and declare right now, here at this conference, we declare restoration for Caleb. Hallelujah. I.K. I think your name is I.K. now, but they call you I.K. I.K. for short. I have just a few minutes. Is there someone like that? I.K. Where are you? You love Jesus? God is going to use you, but there is a lot of work that God needs to do with you, my friend. Huh? Don't be embarrassed there. Eh? This is a minister's conference. Our father here too? Your son is I.K. No problem. I'll pray with you. That's all right. Please just leave them. I want to pray for you. Where are you coming from, sir? Huh? Ujota. Ujota. No, I mean state of origin. I want to pray for you. That everything that does not name the name of Christ, tying down your destiny, it must give way. Daddy, please place your hand on your chest. I'm seeing a thermometer go up and down. High blood pressure. This is BP. Is that true? Huh? Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. It's going down now. There is a name above every other name. Look at our father. At this age, this man is crying. Ah. <laughs> From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. Daddy, please do not cry. Honestly, I feel so touched. Someone, please help this man with. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you, sir. Standing in faith with the grace upon the man of God. And I declare first for your BP. High blood pressure goes down now. Are we agreeing with this man? It goes down now. And I pray for your son, I.K. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Let there be your desire. Where is he? What does he do? He's working with he's working at home, he's working with a company. I'm seeing God. That gentleman is going to be a big businessman. You see. Yes. I don't know, but I'm seeing the name Onicha. You see. That name Onicha. God is going to connect him to someone within that place. Let him not fight it when it happens. There is a hand of God that has gone before him. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, let it be so. In Jesus' name I pray. Please sit down in one minute. Huh? Okay, this gentleman, let me pray for you. You see, you are as good as your friends. You are as born again as your friends. If you are born again and your friends are not very serious, it will eventually affect you. Are we together? I'm speaking in parables. You hear what I'm saying, my friend? Don't be, there's no such thing as we're classmates, we grew up together. You must get to a point in your life where anybody who is not pro kingdom in your life, they must remain at the outer court. You must culture your relationships if you intend to be serious with God. Father, help your son in the name of Jesus Christ. Let that grace rest upon you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let that grace rest upon you. 
I'm hearing the cry of a baby. I'm hearing the cry of a baby. The cry of a baby. Is there someone here who is trusting God for the fruit of the womb? I'm hearing the cry of a baby. This is what I'm hearing in my ears. Look at this. Papa, my God. You will be surprised to see what the God of heaven. Shalina haskede branda gaduzi atala kusia prahaskan. All of you who are coming, except if you are standing for someone, but please make sure you are married, otherwise go back to your seat. Praise the name of the Lord. You are trusting God for a baby? Madam, shout Jesus. My sister, look at me. Lift your hands. Shout the name Jesus. Just do what I'm asking you to do. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that demon. My friend, look at me. This man. Take that grace. In the name of Jesus, I correct what the doctors have told you is stopping fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to believe in the power that is in the name of Jesus. The Lord will surprise you. Take your eyes away from the medical report and trust the Lord. Just believe what I'm asking you to do. My sister, this lady, I'm seeing fire coming on you. This is what I'm seeing now. And I'm seeing something being removed from your stomach. Now in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Let that demonic thing leave you now. I want to pray for all of you because I heard the cry of a baby. The power of God will come upon you as I pray for you. Father, every legal access that the devil has over their fruitfulness that will not allow you to enjoy the blessings of fruitfulness right now by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I decree and declare, release them now, 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 now. Release them now, now. Release them now. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I declare to you, like Eli spoke over Hannah according to the time of life. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God, according to the time of life, let there be fruitfulness for you now. Help this man, help this man. In the name of Jesus, fruitfulness now. Your name is to be hallowed. I declare to you, as you have come out, you will come out again. But this time you will not be alone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, that woman there, is it for yourself or for someone else? Huh? This woman. For my daughter. What where is she? She's in that state. Mama, I will pray with you, but lay hand on your own stomach. The miracle is for you first. There is something God wants to take out of your stomach. Is that true? Huh? Yes, sir. Have you gone to the hospital for it? I will pray with you. In the name of Jesus, let her go now. Release mama. Now! By the power of the Holy Spirit. Even before I pray for your daughter, I'm praying for you. They will not tell you something is growing in your stomach that requires surgery. I command it to go now. Be released right now. And we pray for your daughter. Even as you have stood in for her, let there be supernatural correction right now. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. Please return to your seat rejoicing. Return to your seat rejoicing. Spare me 10 minutes and we're done. Please sit down. 
Five requirements for effective ministry. Five requirements for effective ministry. Number one, every ministry, particularly the fivefold now, but it extends to every facet of ministry. Every ministry that will excel in today's world, every ministry that will thrive and represent the purposes of God must have these five pillars. If they are not there, you cannot have fruitful ministry. Number one, a mandate or a message. Every ministry that must excel must have a mandate and have a ministry, a, a message. Many preachers have messages. Many preachers have series. But you must have a mandate and a message. That becomes the dimension of God committed to you. Your mandate in that universal plan. There is a mandate apportioned to you. If you are oral robots, your assignment is to take the healing power of Jesus to the nations. If you are Reinhard Bonke of blessed memory, your mandate is to bring the healing and the saving grace of Jesus to Africa. There must be a mandate that drives your life. John 3, 16. Jesus himself was speaking to Nicodemus and he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have life everlasting. Very clear, very simple. Most people do not have the message. Acts chapter 2 and verse 36. Your message is very, very powerful. Because that is where your value comes from. Can I tell you, it is the message that makes the messenger powerful. The messenger is not independently powerful. He is as powerful as his message. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Simple message in one sentence. Do you have a mandate? and the message every church every pastor every apostle every prophet in as much as generally speaking we have a corporate agenda of revealing and glorifying jesus but there are dimensions to that call and there has to be a clear definition just help those under the anointing You see, this is why you find out that many people are many things according to such circumstances. The man can stay today and find out that the evangelistic seems to be most marketable. And he becomes an evangelist, then he finds out that the pandemic has really stopped crusades and quickly switched to prophecies because you can do one on one. And then all kinds of things. This, this, this confusion around the body of Christ is because there is no mandate. Can I tell you? Every church, including this, must have what the Bible calls the things that are most surely believed among us. If this is a healing ministry, then I expect that the greatest conviction you should have should be along the area of the power of God to heal. If it's a ministry that has been mandated to raise people financially as a contribution to the larger picture, you should not have members doubting the God who can supply. Luke chapter 4, when you, Luke chapter 1, when you read from verse 1 to 4, right, he was speaking to Theophilus, Dr. Luke, and he said that the things that are most surely believed among us, everybody said the mandate. Can I tell you, every attack on a man of God, every attack on a minister is an attack on the message. It is not an attack on you. Help him, please. The goal of every attack, it does not matter in what dimension it comes. When Satan attacks you, every attack has one singular assignment to discredit the message and the mandate so that your voice will no longer be heard. You protect your ministry by protecting the message. The apostle said, this is the message we have received from the beginning. We were given a message. As ye go, preach, saying, go with that message. The signs will follow the message, the mandate. 
Are we blessed? Your message also defines your unique contribution to the body of Christ. Everybody cannot be everything no matter how yielded you are. You must be able to brand your impact with your message. Your message is what brands you, your impact. Very quickly, number two. The second requirement when you sort the issue of your mandate is the vehicle or the strategy that will drive that message. The vehicle or the strategy that will drive that message. That means, is that message going to be driven using the pulpit? Is it going to use business? The geography of your witness. Can I tell you, it's not enough to know your message. You must know the vehicle and the strategy that will drive that message. That's where we talk about the concept of the seven mountains. The mountain of religion, family, politics, business, education, media, arts, and entertainment. These seven mountains, they represent the platforms where you can stand upon to make sure that that mandate is heard. Very important. Most people have a clear message, but they do not understand that until you have a strategy, a vehicle, in this case now, the pulpit. The pulpit is the strategy or one of the strategies and the vehicles given to the man of God to communicate that prophetic dimension that God has given him. Number three, very quickly. What do you need for effective ministry? An organized platform. You need an organized platform. You need an organized platform. It's not enough to know you are sent to business. You are sent to the fivefold ministry. There has to be an organized platform that brands your impact. Are we together? Look at me. When you hear Holy Ghost Congress, what comes to your mind? When you hear Shiloh, what comes to your mind? When you hear power must change hands, what comes to your mind? Do you ever confuse it? Because more than the mandate, there is an organized platform that brands your impact. When you hear Coca-Cola, do you think of uh, what other? Huh? Do you think of Pepsi? No. They are all watches, but when you hear a Rolex watch, you don't think of others because they brand themselves. When you think Adidas, what do you think of? You see, isn't that interesting? That Adidas has nothing to do with football. Yet when you call Adidas, it is football you think about. And yet they are a clothing line. Because they, want, they knew that their greatest sales will come from that area. And so they connected their relevance to football. So every time you call Adidas, look up please. Whenever you want to go and buy seasoning, most times what do you say you are buying? Whenever you want to buy toothpaste, what do you say you are buying? Oh, so you know this here too. That is the power of an organized platform. There are many people today, can I tell you this? If you want to be relevant in ministry, make sure that as you rise, your platform rises too. It is the mistake that was made with the West. And the reason is because of other issues like taxation, finance and the rest. So they have personal ministry. You will be surprised. Now don't feel embarrassed. Oh no, I shouldn't say this, I'm on life. But you see, there are times that you can know a man of God and not even know the name of his church. Is that true? But you see, the danger with that kind of setting is you cannot reproduce your results. You can't raise other people. The job of a platform is to allow for continuity beyond you. Are we together now? Apostle Babalola is long gone, yet the platform of CAC still continues to raise men. Is that true? An organized platform. Number three. 
Number four. I wrote here, divine backing is the sixth. Divine backing. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. Confirming the word with signs following. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20 still on divine backing. Still on divine backing. Matthew chapter 28 verse 20. Matthew 28 20. Teaching them to observe you is with you. Divine presence and that backing. How do I sit down for instance and say there is somebody called Caleb? Do you know that level of risk? Imagine if every case I called here nobody came out. Imagine if I said the power of God will come on you and the person is looking at me. You are enjoying it because you see it happening and you see the results. You see. And this is not just the issue of faith. This is an issue of trust because there is a history to it. Your faith can graduate to trust. When you keep archiving the history of God's faithfulness, a time comes you know because it is true but you know because there is a track record. Are we together? But right now God is going to tell you after this meeting to try it too. And... <laughs> <laughs> and many of you are going to make mistakes that will surprise you you will leave a meeting you were invited in as if you came for a funeral don't worry be very honest and you are not you are not a habali so learn with honor you will hear john and you will say john the person will say my name is james not john <laughs> how about your third child you say i'm not even married And members can give you a look that are you sent? Who brought this man here? Don't worry. It's better to train yourself and fail with honor so that the day you get it, those who laughed at you will be witnesses and say, We knew when he was in the school of the spirit. Say divine backing. Every time we travel, we travel knowing that there is a hand that backs us. As I stand here, I know that there is a hand that backs and defends me. This is why when we speak, we know that you will return with testimonies. For instance, like this woman that the hand of God is touching, this mama, you, this one lifting her hand. I'm seeing oil coming on her head right now, this woman. You see. Now you imagine this. How do you take that kind of risk? Something is coming on you in the name of Jesus Christ that others who saw you will say is Saul also one of the prophets and I'm prophesying to you by the power that raised Christ from the dead every ability that has functioned on this altar by the man of God by myself and every other man of God who has been here and will be here this combined graces may it rest upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. Please hear me. Now, I want to give you one last key. One last key. The last key that I will leave with you, if you truly want to break through in ministry, is the power of sacrifice. Psalm 50 verse 5. I'm not necessarily talking about money. Don't frown. Just listen. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me. Whether you serve Satan or you serve God, sacrifice will be required somewhere. My sister, I'm seeing a hand come on this lady, and the Lord is saying he's opening a new chapter. That lady, help her in the name of Jesus Christ. Now please pay attention, our time is up. Sacrifice. The sacrifice of your time, the sacrifice of your life, you will never effectively do ministry when you want to be everywhere. 
Can I tell you, ask the man of God, when you answer the call of God upon your life, there are things that you have given up as a sacrifice. Now, our generation with an appetite, you cannot, you cannot, I'm not, please don't feel bad. You can't be traveling every time to go and watch Manchester football in the stadium there, and you are an apostle and you are an evangelist. Thank God for it. Maybe when you are on vacation, but you cannot have the passion of a footballer and have the grace of a man of God. It does not work that way. You cannot give God part-time commitment and get full-time anointing. Now, this is the part that most people do not want. You pray for 10 minutes, pray for 5 minutes, study your Bible carelessly for 2 minutes, and you want God to trust you with the grace and the unction for nations. It does not work that way. Say the power of sacrifice. I beseech you, brethren, Romans 12 verse 1, by the mercies of God, that ye offer your bodies unto God, holy and acceptable. He says, a, a, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. He calls it your reasonable act of service or worship. Verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. It takes time to know God. It takes time to learn doctrine. It takes time to study the materials of those who have gone ahead of you. It takes time to be consistent with the Holy Spirit. There are times God will ask you to lock yourself and for a day, two days, three days. There, you see, this our generation of preachers don't know anything about retreating yourself to flog it out with God. People fast by 12, they are shaking as if they are, they are, they are on, on, on a... Um, um, uh, on drip or emergency or something like that. Can I tell you, don't let anyone fool you. There are impartations from men of God, but there are wells you must dig by yourself. I can assure you on that. If you want the anointing, you must be willing to lay down. You cannot get the anointing without laying down something. When Elijah wanted to command fire from heaven, the prophets of Baal, as they kept calling Baal and he refused to come, they started lacerating one another. That was the last card to call him. They blood, blood, blood out of their body. They understood something about the relationship between fire and sacrifice. Are we together? When it was now time for Elijah to bring it, he set 12 stones, the covenant. And he puts a sacrifice on the altar. And he said, pour water on it. He said, God, the stage is set. And fire came down. If you become that fire and that sacrifice, then you are ready for the anointing. Most people are not ready for the anointing. They are ready for the excitement that the anointing brings. They are ready for the honor that the anointing brings. Can I tell you, genuine mantle and genuine fire comes at the instance of sacrifice. I have not really had the time, in all fairness, I will tell you, to properly sleep in days. Now, I have my way of just working things out. We were just discussing, I think it was yesterday, and I was just thinking to myself, the man of God was saying he's traveling to this, um, Dr. Lumide was saying he's traveling, and, and you just think about this and you're saying, whoever told people that ministry is for lazy people? They think all it takes is just preach, sit down in the office, take coffee while people just stream in with dollars and honorarium. Whoever gave you that narrative is destroying you. At least when you are employed by the government, you have your time. Seven to five or four, whatever time. After that, they don't have a right to disturb you without rewarding you. But there are times on earth that both God and men need your attention. If men allow you rest, God can say, wake up, 2 o'clock, and you are moving around your house as if you are a madman. For a burden that is not your business, you are moving around because a disobedient member is getting into trouble, and God is waking you up to midwife that trouble. Are you ready for the pain of ministry? They met Jesus and said, we want to sit down at your left and right, and he asked them a question, can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism? This is the last prayer point and I'm done. You are going to lay hands on your head and say, Lord, whatever price it takes to obtain the anointing and the grace for my generation, for this season, for my season of advancement and relevance, I obtain grace.
your place in business find your place in ministry if it is the prophetic find it now the apostolic find it now the pastoral find it now Let me pray over your finances. Please look up. There are many dimensions to wealth and abundance. Principally, it comes through your value packaged to products and services and served with excellence to a targeted consumer base. That's what you call business. But there are other dimensions to it. Value, relationships, laws of increase, but to the believer, we are not left without an advantage. There is the prophetic dimension of wealth. Wealth by the finger of God. He said, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. I want to speak over your life. Please believe your match. I stand by the mantle of God upon my life. And I decree and declare, may the heavens be open over you financially. May the heavens be open over you financially. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, He said, we were like, help that lady please, my God. We were like them that dream. And our mouths were filled with laughter. And said they among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for us. He said, the Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. I prophesy to you by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Every captivity, help that lady please. I turn it around right now. 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 Go and prosper. Prosper in ministry. Go and prosper. Prosper in business. Go and prosper. Prosper in family. Go and prosper. Prosper in career. Go and prosper. Prosper in this city. I command Lagos to be open for you now. And let me pray over every member of this great assembly. Serving with joy. Serving with passion. For the Bible declares that a worker is worthy of his wages. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I prophesy. I use this as a point of contact to all the branches across the world connecting by faith the global family of this vision. I decree and declare rise to a new dimension. I declare advancement for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you Heavenly Father. I pray that your people will never be the same. Go from glory to glory. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Basca Nakata Branda Catecos, Cate Branda Catapa Cotosco to break a take a letter. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.